Okay, so continuing on with our videos with statistics in JamaV, we're just gonna uh, kind of stay ba step back a bit, I guess, from the complicated stuff and uh, look at some correlation. So what is correlation? So you're basically looking at the um, idea that one thing correlates with another. So the more you run, the fitter you are, stuff like that. And you can do you can show that um, mathematically using Jamovi, uh, using using numbers, and to see if that correlation is significant or not. There's basically like in the other test, we have a parametric and non-parametric version. So we have either Pearson's here, which is the parametric version, and the Spearman's, which is the non-parametric. And we have to check uh, for these assumptions that we usually do to see which test we should continue with. So we have a question here, does owning a pet make you happy and is there a relationship between how much people like animals and their life satisfaction? As you can see here, when we when we see, we don't, so this is a bit different from what we've been looking at so far. In now, when, in the question we usually see, is there a difference? But in this case we ask, is there a relationship? When you see that word, you kind of already click to that uh, correlation uh, vibe. And this is only looking at two variables, but as we progress uh, through the videos, we're gonna see that you can do these with many, many, um, many different variables uh, to get a more complex equation. But for now, we're just looking at these two just to keep things simple. So yeah, let's jump into Jamovi. Hopefully, you can see that. And uh, so here we have our data. We have our animal liking and our life satisfaction. We're trying to see if there's a correlation, meaning that um, as animal liking goes up, so the more you like animals, um, the more life satisfaction you have, or the other way around. So yeah, the first thing we have to check, assumptions. So if we jump into exploration and descriptives, and uh, whilst we're here to save time, obviously we're trying to be as efficient as we can with these statistics, and there's no need to yeah, keep going back and forth. So we don't, right now we don't know if our data is normal or not. So if we go into this normality check here, uh, we're using the Shapiro Woke for normality. And the same as, oh, if we pop these in here, because uh, we're not splitting, we're not splitting this by male or female. We're just looking at animal liking and life satisfaction, and just the people measured. So the same as in the dependent and independent um, test, we're looking to see if this p-value is above 0 0.05. Uh, so for animal liking, it's 0 0.599, so that's good, and 0 0.085, so that's still above the 0 0.05 mark. So that's above, so that's all good meaning our data is normal and we can continue with the Pearson. So whilst we're here, we can just uh, click off anything we don't need. So for parametric data, as we as we can recall, the easiest thing to report is our standard deviation and our mean. Uh, and that's what we're gonna use here. And we can tick off this normality thing because we don't need it anymore. Because basically when you answer these questions, um, at least the way we've been taught, and uh, you kind of, try, if you follow this five simple steps for these initial tests, if you state what test you have, say if it's significant or not, uh, add some descriptives, so that's this mean and standard deviation, then um, list the kind of statistic that we have for each such test. So, for example, a T value or a U value for the Manwin U or the W, or in this case, the Pearson's R. Uh, so something like that. So that's your 0.4. And then 0.5 is your effect size, which we saw in the previous videos. But the special thing for, the, for this one is, is that the Pearson's R is basically your special statistic, so 0.4, and your effect size, 0.5. There isn't really a, uh, anything else so it's, it's easy you can use that um, that value to compare between studies as well so we've got that so if we go into regression here and we go correlation matrix cool and then if we just pop in these two yeah so here we, you can see so we've got uh, Pearson's here so because our p-value is above 0 0.05 we we can use Pearson's but if it was below we would use Spearman's um, and then we pop our life so that's for animal liking and then we get our uh, statistic here So as you can see, uh, obviously we can't have a correlation between life satisfaction and life satisfaction So we get the animal liking and life satisfaction value here. So our Pearson's are here As basically our effect size and it's telling us so this value tells us two things if the relationship is positive meaning that if life satisfaction increases animal liking increases uh, and tells us if it's strong or weak. So if it's around 0 0.2, something like that, it'll be quite weak. 
and then 0 0.5 here and um, that's that's pretty medium and then if it was like 0 0.8 we can say that's strong and then um, we just below we have our p-value so that again tells us if the if our results is significant and because this p-value is below 0 0.05 we can say that is significant so we have everything we need here to report it's not it's not really a long sentence so if we go into uh, word here and put, pick up the answer so I wrote there was a significant because of that p value here uh, medium because of this r value that's about 0 0.5 positive because the r value is positive it's not minus 0 0.495 and then correlation between animal liking and because again this is a parametric test of Pearson uh, I put mean and standard deviation so we've got fa 6.1 plus or minus 14.8 and the same for the life satisfaction added the medium mean sorry mean and the standard deviation. So that's basically what you need to do. The thing is, Jamovi can be a bit picky with the how you do your graph. It's not the best software for graphs, uh, but if you plus here on the plot correlation matrix, uh, it should give you some sort of graph. Yep, so you see here, you get this. Again, it's not the best, so if you want to use Excel for that graph, uh, or SPSS, those are better alternatives, I think. This is, this is how you do uh, Pearson's. So if we jump into uh, another example, just to see uh, how we can do it from a, a different a different view. So here we can see a body mass index BMI is widely used as a measure of body uh, measure of obesity, but is it correlated with percentage fat mass? So what we're, what we're being asked here is that does uh, BMI correlate with uh, percentage fat mass? So if we just jump into the data. Okay, so here we have our data. So we've got our BMI and our percentage mass. Uh, so again, I'm gonna go into exploration. Cool. So if we pop the BMI and percentage mat fat again, and go into statistics and check for that normality. Cool. So as you can see here, where our percentage fat mass, uh, our p-value, we look at the p-values again, is above 0 0.05. However, the BMI isn't. So in this case, we're going to be drawn to use the Spearman's because even if one of them meets the meets the assumption, if at least one of them doesn't, then we have to move on to the uh, Spearman's test. So Spearman's, that's a non-parametric equivalent. So what we know about non-parametric is that we mean and standard deviation doesn't tell us much. So I would go for range and medium uh, to report as your descriptive as part of that. Uh, and then we just took up the normality as part of point three of uh, the gain of full marks value. So we've got that. So then we jump straight back into the correlation matrix, pop these two in, sorry, tick off uh, Pearson and tick on Spearman. So now we've got a Spearman's row value and a p-value again. So in this case, our p-value is above 0 0.05. So the correlation is non-significant in this case, meaning that there is no significant correlation between percentage fat mass and BMI. And again, this value here, the spins rate tells us there is a positive correlation. However, uh, it's not significant. And it's also quite weak because of this um, low Spearman's row value. Uh, again, we can plot it. Yeah, here. So you, you, as you can see, it's, it's, pre, it's, it's not really what we want here is kind of a graph like that, a line like that. But because this is quite um uh, the great the gradient's quite small we can see that the correlation isn't very strong and also the data is very spread out if you look at the points so we can see that the correlation is pretty weak uh, so now yeah we've got everything that we need to report so if we jump straight back into word um so i've worded it there was a non-significant because of this p-value weak uh, positive correlation between bni bmi so i did the median and the range and fat percentage uh, again, median and the range. So that's a quick overview of how to do correlation in Jamovi. Um, hope that helped. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.